He was a man who was very good at remembering things, very good at remembering facts and um, kind of dates and things like that. And bit by bit, those things fell away. But it was so gradual, it was like the fog coming down. Hi, I'm Nikki, and this is what I learned from my father's dementia. I don't know quite when he got the diagnosis. And that's because we already knew, and he already knew, and we discussed it as a family. Forgetfulness became something that wasn't just forgetfulness until there came a time when none of us could ignore it. He lost memory, he lost capacity to kind of look after himself in a kind of daily sense. For those first years, it was not an unkind illness. It was sad, but not horrifying. That changed very dramatically when he went into hospital because there were visiting hours, um, which we were absurdly obedient to. He went for days and days on end with nobody coming in to see him. From it being a very slow slide into the darkness, it became a sudden precipitous plunge off a cliff edge. And he came out immobile, skeleton, completely inarticulate, and like a ghost of his former self. I lived through seeing this happen to my father, and it didn't occur to me to think that those rules that they have in hospitals that keep carers out are kind of blind and cruel. The mind is very precarious, especially when you have dementia, and people need to be treated as people, not just as patients, and as subjects, not just as objects. Every dementia is different. Every person who lives with dementia experiences it differently. And every carer has a different experience of caring. Your whole lifestyle alters. Time takes on a different meaning. Structure and safety and the home becomes much more important. We can't do it alone. People do do it alone, but we can't do it alone. The carers of people who are living with dementia should have the same right to accompany them in hospital or in other places as parents do of sick children. I started John's campaign in order to rescue him, but he was beyond rescue. And I know I wrote what dementia teaches us about love, partly to say sorry to him. It's nearly five years now since my father died, and I understand now that his death was a kindness. When death comes, they are then restored. You can remember them whole again. You can remember them healthy again. I can now remember him as somebody swimming in a lake or dancing with my mother or working in his garden. So in a way, he has been returned to me. How we live, how we look after people who are vulnerable and let ourselves be looked after in our time, how we, how we face the end of our life. These are huge questions and I just think that we need to have more conversations about it.